everybody, welcome to a special 42 Gear Street 2 edition of Making Money with the Guitars with the very wonderful Gemma Jura. Hello, hi, hi, hello. Hi, everybody. Hi. Firstly, thank you for joining me. Absolutely. You know, get that housekeeping out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have you here. This is Making Money with the Guitars, a series that is doing very well. Nice. Because it's aimed at um, inspiring people that have maybe picked up a guitar or an instrument but don't know how to turn it into a career. Okay, okay, I can I can see that, yeah. So that's the point where every guest says, oh God, what have I done? Why am I sitting here? No, I, I, I totally know why I'm doing what I do. It's very easy. You do not get into music if you want to become rich or famous or you want to get stuff and instruments and gear for free. That's the three no-goes because that is not why you do music. You have to have your heart and your passion for music, you know, and then this will pay off sooner or later, because if you're only into it to whatever, like get the chicks or become famous and stand on big stages and have a jet set live, that's the total wrong. It's, it's a wrong approach. And I've always done that for the love of playing music. That's the only reason why I started playing music. There's nothing else that I could do. So. It's great advice. I have to be honest with you and say I did start playing music to get the chicks and get, you know, do all that because I had nothing else to offer. I felt I had nothing else to offer. I didn't think I was special. I didn't think I had anything particularly interesting to say or, you know, there were other boys because I was very, very young who were really good at sports. When did you start playing the uh, 12, 13. 12? So it was okay. a difficult age. You know? Yeah. And I look like this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I suddenly... Uh, it's not true to say that I started music to get the girls. I started music... Um, to become a little bit more special and differ from others maybe as well. Yeah, but it was a very quick, it was a very quick phase where um, I started music initially because I broke this finger uh, and this one. Oh. And I had to, the doctor said, you can squeeze this ball for six months. Or you can learn to play an instrument. So I, I started on violin. Wow, really? I never knew that. Yeah, they're both really wonky. Can you see? Mine look like that. Not really. Okay. But my middle fingers look like that. Look, look like that. Oh, yeah, they are weird. Yeah. Well, my like... first finger is permanently on a, on a bar chord, so... Yeah. Yeah. Straight first index finger here. So I played violin very quickly, uh, and then it, I broke a string in my face. Didn't like that, so I moved the instrument a bit lower. Discovered that rock music was the best thing ever. Um, then realized, oh, now I am a little bit different. Now maybe the girls will be interested in me. Hey, Adam. Hi, Andy. Hello. Adam's just joining us. Adam from Hot Pole Studios. He's wearing a... Is it a, a cat mask? What is it? It's a goat mask. Uh, yeah. Good. <laughs> yes. Uh, Sorry, I so, yeah, I, I did go through that phase. Okay. Um, but very quickly, the girls got in the way of the music. Not mm -hmm. that I was drowning in whatever you want to refer to it as. Yeah. <laughs> Offers. 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 Um, but very quickly, I realized... I don't want to go and see her because I really would like to play my guitar right now. Yeah, that's totally what, what I did when I was young. I would I would sit in school and go like, when can I get back home and just, you know, I want to play guitar. And when everybody else was mingling, you know, to go swim or to meet up for a coffee or something, I was sitting in my room. Um, I had a little tiny studio. Um, where my parents still live and the studio still exists. I had a Fostex four track cassette recorder. Yeah. So good. And then, you know, back in the days I learned how, what does this pitch thing do? And then you, you would turn it now, nowadays everything is digital. digital. You just click the mouse. And back in the days I was like twisting that knob and I was like, Ooh, it's becoming higher. Oh, if I, if I hire. Did the, you notice that the tape was spinning faster? Yes, exactly. And of course. that's why there's a relation exactly. to what you're seeing and what All you're doing. All the analog, like real physical stuff, you could experience, you were able to experience what it does, whatever effect it does. I created for the first time a chorus effect without even knowing that I created a chorus effect. I was, I don't know, maybe 12, 13, something like that. And I was writing songs already. My first song that I ever wrote, I was, Ten, and it's called I Love My Guitar. <laughs> Sweet, right? And it's like, I love my guitar and I always be with her. She comes with me here and there and everywhere I go. I love my guitar, I love my guitar and I hope she loves me too. It's, it's so stupid. You didn't, you didn't release that, you don't want to get demonetized. Right? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> but then 
I, I tracked and I realized if I track the same thing and I, I just play it slightly different, like play the same thing, but a little bit delayed, that was a cool sound, you know? And I was like, oh, what is this? And then later on, I figured, oh, if I push that chorus pedal, that sounds like what I did on my tape. This is it. This is cool. And then I learned how to bounce tracks because I only had four tracks. Nowadays, with everything being digital, you know, like you can have like a choir of a hundred thousand people and all. And sometimes I believe it's maybe not even a wise thing because totally agree. people completely started to overproduce. There's more options. We can let, add another layer of this or that or whatever. And then in the end, it's just like one big muffled production that is so overproduced. And I like when you hear the clearance of everybody who does his or her thing, you know, like I, I want to hear my guitar instead of a giant guitar orchestra for a mighty sound. Um, and then I had to bounce tracks. So I would record track number two, three and four, and then I would bounce these to one. And it was, I remember when I was a kid, everything that I discovered was so special. So, so, you know, you're proud, you discover something. Hey, this pitch thing, like if I twist it, everything goes faster. What happens if I record to that faster version and then lower the pitch again? Like, you know, like yeah. just trying stuff out. Nowadays, it's just the kids know there's this thing called pitch and it does whatever it does, but they don't have a relation to that analog thing, what it actually did to get that sound. So I, I'm really thankful that I, um, I grew up in a time you're sounding was... rather old, Jen. Huh? You're sounding rather old, Jen. Well. <laughs> <laughs> the kids today. Well, I, I'm, yeah, yeah. These we're, kids we're, today. We're about the same age and we've experienced yeah, similar exactly. things in that, in that thing. Um, I've still got a four track at home. You do? Yeah, I, I bought one because I found a lot of my old tapes. Like a cassette four track? Cassette, <gasps> it's Ooh. a Tascam Porta Studio yes. 414. I think yeah, it that was the other one. You're but the... it was it was the best one exactly. that you could have at that. Yeah. Um, I got it for a steal. Anyway, I found a lot of tapes and thought I need to get a four track. And I waited for I think about a year for one to come up near me. Yeah. And I rushed. Like I ran to this. It was a business that was. They used to record their own uh, training tapes. Uh -huh. So this guy was selling four SM58s and a Tascam Porta Studio 44, whatever it was, yeah. for 200 euros. Oh my god. With XLR no cables, deal. with some cassettes, and it was in the storeroom of this business. Mm -hmm. And they're like, <sighs> so good. The SM58s were pristine. Oh, and the stands, of course, the desk stands, because they would record their own training tapes. So nice. So yeah, I rushed home and I was suddenly listening to myself at the age of about 12, 13. Yeah. And I would just press record and just play, or my mates would come around and we'd play together. Oh my God, you've been time traveling. That is so cool. And I'm cool. going to somehow make this into a video so we can all experience my pain. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's... It was, I don't know, I don't know what this, this chat's talked into. We're old, let's deal, deal with it. It's also about, you know, like when we talk about back in the old days, everything was analog and now everything is digital. I'm not the biggest fan of, of digital modulation stuff, you know, it's kind of like amp simulations and everything. And when I, um, when I first tried to Synergy amps, it was very interesting because I got there and my mindset was, this can't be good. It feels weird because... I remember you I called mean, me or messaged me and said, I'm thinking of... I'm thinking of... How are they? And I, I went there and there was a there was a head with two holes in it. And I'm like, wait a minute. There, what is this? And I mean, the idea is not new. So Synergy didn't come up with that idea. It's like all the way back in the days. <laughs> um, but then... I plugged in the first preamp module because you probably know you know how it works. You you exchange preamp modules, and yeah, so just it has have a power this, amp in it, right? Exactly. It, the, the head is a power amp, mm -hmm. and because all these sounds of different brands are, they are the preamps, and you get all these little tiny modules, and you can exchange them. And what was really interesting for me, why I tried them out in the first place, was. You can literally create your dream amp. Every module comes with two uh, two channels. So, for example, the the fifty watt head has like two modules in it. So it got four channels. Classic. Okay, good. But then, you know, every brand has a certain sound. Mm -hmm. Sure, that's why you buy a a Diesel or why you buy a Fender Twin Reverb. But then now, imagine you could combine, like, cut your amp in two halves and the 
clean section would be a Fender twin reverb sound, and the high gain section would be a Dietzel or a Soldano or, and it's the idea was so cool to me, and I'm like I have to try it out. And then I plugged it in, and I was very skeptical. But then I played the first chord I remember, and it was immediately like, whoa. I was, I, I couldn't believe it. And the, the way that system works makes you be so, it, it makes you so flexible. Mm. For Evanescence, for example, we use a lot of high gain stuff, right? So it's for my solo stuff, I prefer six strings turned E to E, like tuned E to E. And uh, I like the dynamics. And my, my favorite, favorite, favorite preamp model is the Friedman Harry Bound Eye. You can literally play like a stratty kind of like nice, tasteful, clean-ish sound, but you also can go like, gong, 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 gong. So cool. Why do I talk about this now? I think it's because I called us old. And what, ah, I'm, yeah. what I'm taking from, from it is that even though we were kind of saying that, you know, it used to be good in the old days, yeah. as a musician, you need to be adaptable. Yeah. And so it's not, there are no, maybe different for you, but from the majority of people, there are no roadies anymore, or there are less roadies available. Because the roadies have all like hip break and... <laughs> yeah, because they did a hard, hard job. I mean, I get it that nowadays everything is designed for being easier, more convenient. I, I get it. But as long as I can carry my amp and my cab, I will always do that because, I don't know, maybe it's just I'm old school and I totally feel a difference if you use amp simulation, digital. You move back to your 4x12 cabs and it, the, the air moves it's different. The air moving, isn't it? It's just different. And I mean, it's I appreciate Yeah, I appreciate it because it fits the time that we live in right now and it's convenient. But also, I feel like I had this very old pot like back in the days and I was practicing at home as a kid and it was just like, yeah. But then, for the first time ever, I plugged into a, like a real tube amp and a real cab and the loudness. This is probably something, some advice that I would give to all guitar players, like starting up guitar players. Don't think that you have to sit inside of your bedroom all by yourself, creating the most awesome notes and playing the fastest sweep licks, whatever. It doesn't help shit if you do not play live. As soon as you can, go out on the stage, deal with that noise, deal with people in your face when you play. And just that experience of playing with all sorts of different people will, will teach you so much. That's one of the biggest advice I give to all my guitar students. Like, Go, out, can, go out and suck. It, and just experience that yeah. and fail and learn from your, fail, your failures and, and just go through that. Oh my God. I mean, a guitar, high gain guitar is a bitchy instrument. Yeah. You have to learn how to control the noises. Out of a sudden, there's a feedback. Like, what the heck is going on? Why is my guitar making these sounds? There's no feedback in your bedroom when you play with little headphones and a tiny little tune. Go out and play. And, and also, don't be afraid to play. Because I remember when I was young, um, my dad wanted to bring me to all these jams, like where you literally play just a blues and A, or maybe E. Oh, it sounds like heaven. But that's, that's all you do, um, at least back in the days when I was small. But I was always afraid that I'm not good enough, you know, like, oh, God, everybody's going to play better than I do. And even nowadays, I'm not like the fastest guitar player, but I love what I do and I focus on what I can. Mm -hmm. There are tons of guitar players who play every single step. Guthrie. Guthrie, by the way, I love you. But that guy's ridiculous. He can play literally every style, no matter what it is. I can, for example, I can't do sweepings. I, I'm not good at neoclassical stuff. Mm -hmm. But I never approached it because I never wanted to sound like that. Or, you know, that's stuff for, for the Ingwie Malmsteins. And I never wanted to do that. I was more like ACDC, hard rock, kind of fun stuff, which is for my personal taste, not... <laughs> so... If you find out what's your style. Plus you can do it with your voice. So you don't Exactly. Need to I don't need to play and practice it. I can just go like Woo! or Woo! that's what I do. You know, sometimes in the solos, oh I want I want some arpeggios now. I just go to the mic and go like Woo! No, I don't. <laughs> Hear it here first. But the thing is the most important thing is that you should focus on what's your flavor as a guitar player. 
Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Because apart from when you're a hired gun, so if you can do those things, if, and I'm talking hired gun from covers band to yeah. playing at a school, you know, to yeah. playing kids songs to uh, in a studio. If you're not doing that, if you find the passion in something that you, you have, you will do it better. Exactly. And it exactly. doesn't matter if that's not the fastest or not the most melodic or even the nicest sounding. Yeah. If you have passion, you will be great at it. And then you will find, thanks to the glory of the internet, other people that, that love it too. And that's the beauty of being a musician yes. in these modern times. I know we poo poo digital stuff and we, we do love the sound of these analog desks. But also... We're old. Yeah. And what can we do? We don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> I had immense fun. I learned a lot from those desks. <laughs> Um, but I wouldn't be without what we have right now. We, we, couldn't, exactly. we couldn't have this chat. Yeah, exactly. And so how supportive were your, were your parents when you were starting? Super supportive. And I love you, mom. I love you, dad. You're the best. <laughs> um, my dad has been a musician, is a musician. And when, when I was a kid, they, he would always like take me by his hands and I would sit on the side of the stage. And, um, and music has never, ever been something in my life where I would go like, whoa, this is like fantasy. This is amazing. This is unreachable. It has always been a part of my family. Mm -hmm. And at the age of four, I was like, yep, becoming a musician. I never wanted to become anything else. Seriously. Kids always dream of becoming like, I, I want to become a fireman or police or, or astronaut superhero. or superhero, whatever. My son's into, uh, my daughter wants to go to the moon. Oh, um, I, I, I heard that a lot too, but I never wanted to go uh, to the moon. My son wants to... Oh, Mikhail's here. Mikhail watches the show from out there and he eats food. So, uh, there we go. <laughs> um, that's his entertainment for the day. Yeah, so my <laughs> kids are all over that, but they also have instruments. And yeah. my daughter now wants to be an artist. She wants to... Doesn't... She has a job. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday, she has to do her job, which is drawing. Nice. And she's very self-disciplined. What day is it, Daddy? Sunday. I've got to go to work. Oh, nice. How old is your daughter? She's... Just turn five. Sweet. I so, like. Yeah, but um, yeah, back to that. You, you what, know. Whatever art it is that kids these days discover, whether if it's, you know, like music or painting or creating something, I, I would like to call it creating because yes. especially in these weird times that we have right now, if you create something and it gives your day purpose or your week or no matter, but you create something that wasn't there before you mattered yes. and you do something, whether if it's a beautiful song or a nice lick or a picture or a sculpture, creating something is, is a beautiful thing. And I think more important nowadays than it has ever been. It's changing from nothing to something. Exactly. Um, and you are the one who matters because yeah. you made it happen. Therefore it has value. Uh, cooking. I, I started cooking recently, like, I, like I, a crazy person. I've been paying attention, yes. And I, I totally, I totally, really, it's, it's another way of having a, a, a creative outlet. It's like, cook, flavors, taste, awesome. And you create some, but okay, you create a, a really beautiful dinner, but then it's gone. Oh, no, gone. But, but then, you, but, if but you're then like me, <laughs> it, it stays around. <laughs> 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 But yeah, it, it's, <coughs> I love talking about art or creating things like that mm. because what you shouldn't be doing and coming from someone that's been through this, you shouldn't be doing for the likes, for the clicks, for yep. the followers. It will lead you to a very dark place because people do not care. They care when you are passionate about something and when you change their life. Exactly. And I love talking to you, Jen, because we, we're on the same page about this. Absolutely, yeah. We do this, no matter how hard it is. Yeah, and sometimes, because just, it's, it's just imagine, I, back in the days, years ago, cent centuries ago, I uh, played in a, in a cover band. It was just jobs, delivering music to people. And I remember I had a horrible gig. It was in a, in a, in a beer tent, kind of like Oktoberfest kind of thing. And I was a singer. And I, I had to dress in a Bavarian dress, like the Dirndl. And I had... I had I don't know, ponytails, and I was singing Schlager, like folk music. Oh. And I drove back home that day, I remember, and I was like, that's it. I'm not going to do this because the only reason I was in that band was because it's a job and I'll get money from that job. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I told myself, that's it from today on, no more jobs like that. Then back in the days, I created um, a fun 
all female ACDC tribute band because that is cover that I enjoy and I wanted to play it. I mean, everybody who can play ACDC probably agrees it's fun to play. Oh yeah. And uh, I've been doing this and I've been struggling a lot. I had times in my life where I literally lived off tap water and dry bread, but still I would prefer do music instead of like doing this job for the money. And I still kept passionate writing my own music, playing covers that I want and I choose to cover and, and play and then just deal with the hard times and yeah. You need those hard times to appreciate the high times. You, you, Maybe. I'm not saying an artist should suffer, but people that have just handed people that have had things handed to them do not appreciate it as true. much that's, as someone that's who's true. worked that's for true. it. That's true. And you always have to know where you come from, you know. I mean I play in Evanescence. I don't even have to tune my own guitar anymore. Um, and sometimes it's, I look, I, I, I fly out of my body and observe what is going on with my life and career. And I'm like in, left in unbelief because this is like a dream come true. And I don't want to call it a job because we are all friends in the band. We, we really, we, we are in a text group, keep sending us funny stuff, funny pictures, and just like friends. And, um, that's why I don't like to call it a job. Because that's Amy and the guys are are my heart, my, my family, my friends, and I really miss them. Um, but uh, where did I start? I lost track. I was so emotional right now. Um, uh, about it's a, it's not a job, and you wanted to. I lost it as well because okay, I good. Really Everybody was so emotional. It just you don't hit have to me. I'm like, oh my guitar. god, I miss Amy and the boys so much. Um, you don't have to tune your own guitar. You you lift oh, yeah. out of your body. And it's, it's uh, thank you, thank you, got it. Um, and it's it's kind of crazy because back in the days. My dad, he said, daughter, when you want to play guitar on stage, you first have to learn to carry your gear. And it's true. It's true. I still know where I come from. I don't take anything for granted and just like sit there and go like, hey, tech, tune my guitar. I have no problem with tuning my guitar all by myself and carrying stuff. It's just that I, I really appreciate that I have a great guitar tech who does that for me. I will never be the one who goes into like a hotel room and goes like, where is my fruit plate? Why don't my sweet have a fruit plate? It's, I, I really think it's so important that you remember where you come from and how you started and don't just become an asshole <laughs> because nobody's more worth just because they play in front of 20,000 people. I've played shows in front of 20 people. And those 20 people who show up for your show, it's not their fault that they're just 20 and they deserve the best. Absolutely. Right? And and if I see, I'm not going to mention any names, but if I see people kind of like, you know, like this, just because they play in big bands, it's just wrong to me. We're all the same. And it doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl or a skunk or it doesn't matter what you are. We're all the same. Well, maybe we're not the same as skunks, but, but you know, you, you got the idea. <laughs> And a very, very wise man once said, you should be thankful and carry appreciation for what you're doing. This is your, your real, I don't want to say payment, but sort of it is. Like if you carry appreciation for the fact that you're able to do what you do. Wow. What a sentence. Mm. I can repeat that. <laughs> then this is, this is your goal as a musician. You know, and, and it's it's a constant struggle with your ego because we all put out stuff there. Is it a song or a solo? And we wait for judgment. We wait for the thumbs up. Yeah. And 500 people can tell you how awesome you play, how great your tone is, and how you contributed to their lives. And then this one person says, you suck. You're going to be destroyed. It's it's like, it's it's insane suffering. And that should not happen because when you're like, whole with yourself and you're you're appreciating the fact that you do what you do you don't need those clicks and likes you know and that is literally my goal i'm still working on myself to to get there because i i see myself like checking my instagram and have you seen my one minute jams i certainly have it's insane the last one with nico mcbrain it went crazy i'm like what is happening but i mean it's nico nico if you see this but what I must, I love I must, i've got to jump in there and say it's not just Nico, it's the fact that you have started this thing and it's consistent. 
to I try my very best <laughs> because you know we're trying to you know I have to analyze what you do Oh, oh my that, God, that <laughs> I'm getting I, I, analyzed. I've even, I've even crossed the leg. Oh my God, I didn't know I did that. Okay, go, um, go ahead. Talking about making money with music, you could you could create one one minute jam that was, say, not very good, say, mm -hmm. under par, or the first one or something that didn't perform how you wanted it to perform. Because I play an Evanescence, you know, you could have been, you wouldn't be, but you could be. You have to get over that underperformance of that and keep doing it and consistently you know have a bad album you have to keep working and keep enjoying consistency is a, is a very important thing in life in general i think um, whether if it's you practice every day or you put out videos or whatever you do it's very important to keep going and not get lost in the moment and then you'll you'll have like you disappear for a moment and then you come back and I think that's a very, very important point. Also, like I tell my younger guitar students um, and I can tell these kids sometimes think I know you guys think that I can tell if you have been practicing or not. But we guitar teachers, we can. Um, and the thing is, and I was like that sometimes in in the early beginnings of playing guitar, um, I would practice right before my guitar lesson for two hours. But then, you know, not really, because I always kept playing. Like I said, I was in school waiting until I can get back mm -hmm. home and finally mm -hmm. go back to my instrument. But um, sometimes you would sit there and practice like a maniac for two hours because you have to go to the guitar lesson. Mm -mm. Doesn't really work. You know, have you met Jamie Humphreys yet? Yeah. Um, he got taught by Phil. I can't remember Phil's last name. And they were very close friends. And was it X? It wasn't X. No. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and they were friends, but he was his teacher. There was a teacher friend, uh, mm -hmm. teacher pupil relationship, but also a friendship. Mm -hmm. And there was one time Jamie went to a lesson, and he said, "I'm, I'm really sorry, Phil. This is got, I, I haven't rehearsed this week. Get out." Yep. He sent him it, out of the lesson. Wasn't Joe Satriani doing the same thing to Steve Vai? I think so. I don't know. I think same story. I, I think so. I'm not sure. But it, he he said, you know, I can, I'm allowed to say this because he, he said I can, mm -hmm. um, and also I don't care. He um, <laughs> he learned so much from that experience, and yes. he respected Phil and respected his teacher mm -hmm. for doing that. To, even though he, you know, the car drove home and they were gonna hate him <laughs> with words, you know, that Jamie would use. And um, we don't because we don't because we're family friendly. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was one of the greatest lessons he learned. And yeah. hopefully, I get to talk to him a little bit later about it. But yeah, sometimes like. I don't practice enough. I know that. Me too. Um, I am not where I want to be with the guitar. Man, a student of mine recently asked me, how long do you play the guitar now, Jen? And I'm like, holy. <laughs> it's it's kind of like scary to say three over three decades. If I would talk to my younger self and ask my younger self, hey, Jen, what do you expect after three decades of guitar playing? How would you sound? I would go like, I don't know, like I see myself in a spaceship playing all different <laughs> kinds of like tricks and everything. And I'm like, I'm not there yet. I still have to keep practicing. Really, I, I have to. And that's another thing. A lot of people reach a certain kind of spot where they go like, I'm happy with what I do now. You should never reach that in life in general, not only when it comes to practicing Contentment. guitar, it's like you you never know everything and you never stop learning. Like the whole process of life is a learning process, no matter what you do. And I think as soon as your brain kind of tells you, yeah, I got it, I made it. Uh -uh. Look at 2020, right? Yeah, there We're always good. comes something. Music careers are great. We're going on tour. Yeah, not. <laughs> Our tour was postponed from this spring to this fall and got postponed again to fall next year and it's uh yeah when she says fall she means autumn Aut autumn i'm sorry so our tour got uh postponed to uh, september 2020 and then it got postponed again to 2021 now in autumn in autumn we haven't mentioned your rather gorgeous peer mm. i i've tried i've actually seen it i've Wanted to segue several times into it. I know that's not why we're here, but have if you we touched it yet, I have not. Do you want to touch it? Ah! 
Um, I was lucky enough to be in the room when Steve announced this. Oh, God. And um, Steve Vai, for a moment, is not a guitar hero of mine in the sense that okay. I respect him. I love what he does for music, and I, he's a, he is a god. No. But he did not. He was not one of the ones that inspired me to play. However, now I can now look at him and say, "My goodness, mm -hmm. I love some of what he does." And I, but to the guitar industry, the gem was yep. a huge breakthrough. Impact, yeah. It was, I mean, it, it started. Many it things. started like how many years ago? Twenty five, thirty years ago? I think it's thirty. Thirty already now. Oh. Let's say twenty five, just to be safe. But let us know in the comments. <laughs> yeah, teach us. So it started out with the RG and you know why he came up with that monkey grip? I mean, this is the new, I think they call it teardrop. Might be. The teardrop uh, grip, um, which is an innovation because there are no longer jams. Now there's the PS, yeah. the paradise in art. Um, they changed a lot. They changed the pickups a little bit. Um, I don't know what they did, but uh, it's it, first of all, they look super, super beautiful. It's classy and as heck. I thought that the covering might, you know, muffle the pickup work a little yeah. bit, but it didn't. And I don't know what they did, but... Hey, if you hold it, I can, yes. I can get a close-up on you. Absolutely. And then you can hold it up a little bit. I'll go like this. Can you see that? And I'm going to get in trouble for not having uh, adjusted that camera properly. Uh, can you see that? Yes. Oh, here we go. That's That's a good one. And I can even look through. And I thought that um, the cover might muffle the pickup work, but it didn't. What they do is the PS sound a little bit more hotter. They have, a, I don't know, it, maybe it's just my feel, but the output is higher. If I compare it to the gem that I have, this one really is a different character. Uh, I didn't expect that because I thought, oh, well, it's just a little bit of style. And what Fancy is the, gem. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right? But it's, and I have I have this thing, like I leave that, that thing always, I, I take it away. I literally, I buy it, I get a guitar, unscrew it, and because if you change tunings, you have to adjust. And it's, it's how many times did I sit there and I'm like, okay, I have to adjust. Six I don't have any screwdriver. Yeah. And then yeah. you're, you're like, okay, you're I can't. This is the biggest, best invention ever. It's magnetic now. But look at me, moron. Like, I am such a dork. I still don't have it on there. <laughs> Even though it's magnetic and I can take it off without any screwdriver. When when Steve uh, announced that at the at NAMM, yeah. and we were in the room and there was all these, it was super weird, I super imposter syndrome. I'm like, mm -hmm. what am I doing in this room? <laughs> you know, and he was late because, you know, he was busy, so busy. Yeah. And uh, so we had very little time with him. And when he announced that and it popped off, the whole room went, that's what you do, yeah. Because we are such nerds, <laughs> and we rely on our tools. You know, this is a, yeah. this is a tool. it's a beautiful instrument. It's, it does wonderful things, but it is also a tool. And if that tool doesn't do the job so well, you get a different tool. Yeah. Plus, you have to. Um, you know, I've always been paying attention to getting very constant, reliable instruments because I get it. You know, when you start to play guitar, you don't want to buy a three thousand bucks guitar. But still, I mean, you can't. You... Well, if you're rich, you can, but it's nobody oh. does that. No, like I don't think like normal people can't afford that. And um, when I when I started, I think my very first guitar that I bought, um, like my own fir first guitar that I bought from the money that I owned while working hard, um, it was an Ibanez, the S four hundred seventy DX, and I still have that guitar, and I love it. I would never sell it. Um, and you kind of like the you you develop a certain taste. So there are the the Les Paul kind of people. Mm -hmm. There are the kind of you know sports cars, and uh, I like my Ibanez RG and these kind of people. And then there are the guys who like hot rods, and those would be the like you know classic Stratty kind of taily sound and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And you you discover your own style, and then it's. I've never, I feel like I've never left my path because I've always loved these guitars and they are so, for, for me personally, I mean, somebody else might go like, oh, I can't play on that, I need a Les Paul. But for me, these guitars just, I, I take that guitar and it becomes one with me. When I take another guitar, which might be even like very heavy, I, I take the guitar and it, it doesn't feel right and it feels like, 
out of balance or I feel like I'm using a piece of wood with strings attached. Mm -hmm. And I would never feel like that with any Ibanez guitar. Maybe. I mean, I haven't played all the Ibanez guitars, but for all the guitars that I have, they just merge with me. And that's a very beautiful thing when you experience that for the first time. I really enjoyed when I was holding it, the way that it curves back here. Yeah. Because um, I'm in this horrible, horrible position where I love uh, a jazz master body mm -hmm. because of the way it fits my body. Okay. But I don't like the jazz master tram because I've just, I'd, I'd love to, to be able to get on with it, but mm -hmm. I, it just doesn't work for me. Yeah. And being quite big, you know, that body's probably a little bit small. Call for yourself me. tall. Big gives the wrong impression. All right, I, I'm I'm tall, <laughs> but my you know my arms are long. There's a long mm. distance from yeah. from my feet to my head. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, may I, may I hold your here once more? If Absolutely. I hold this, people ask me why do I only review three quarter size guitars? <laughs> <laughs> and no, uh, hang on, there's, there's the camera there. Oh, it's far too low, but my head is almost bigger than that guitar. <laughs> And yes, of course, I can I can play it, but a jazz master for some reason is slightly bigger. But, but my point is, um, it, it's, <laughs> I don't know what my point is really, but it feel, I can really feel how nice it's. Quite a it's a very thin neck, but it's quite a big shoulder on there, isn't there? But it's it's not. Geeky. I don't know exactly. I mean, let us know in the comment section what kind of specific neck it is because I've I've always felt the jam necks in general are always different yeah it's not a i was i was really looking for a word now that they are different and i personally love it and you see the scalp frets that's the oh. new thing too yeah the the final do you know what? i've never played a scallop fret before well i'm gonna do it really oh that's weird <laughs> Also, I play quite hard. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you have to play really soft now. That's weird as heck. That's probably the most musical thing you'll hear this whole 42 Gear Street. <laughs> um, you didn't actually tell us about the monkey grip. You, you, you opened us up with... Oh, sorry, yes. The monkey grip. <sighs> I keep distracting myself. So the monkey grip, literally, when, when they worked on, on Steve's guitar, is what at least what I heard is that he was like clearly for the fact to make a difference to all the other guitars. And if you make a difference, just make a difference so you can pose, you know? Like when, when you hold the guitar like that, you can simply pose and just do like things you can't really do with a guitar without holding it like that. So that was just brilliant. I love thing. it. So if you ever design a guitar, don't steal ideas and come up with something amazing. Like the monkey grip. Yeah, it's, it's iconic. Yeah, but I wouldn't be able to fit my hands in that. But... Well. You can, of course. If you can't, give it a try. Come on. Oh, yeah, but it, oh, I can. But I feel like I'm going to drop that. <laughs> you need a special edition of the pier, please, Ivanez. <laughs> bigger, about 25% bigger. For bigger hands. For bigger handed people. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love how this conversation's gone because... It's uh, all over the place. It's all <laughs> everywhere. But that's what it's like when you and I get together. And as long as we're having fun, then hopefully you're enjoying it. Um, you're a, a great example of how a hardworking musician can live a lifestyle, as you said, not being rich but living as a musician through your passion, through your, the thing that makes you happy. Exactly. And we've known each other for a few years now, and I think some of that time you, you weren't so happy. I got the vibe that when we chatted... Well, it's, you know, you go through different times and, and, and phases in your life, and uh, sometimes when you don't feel like you can fulfill your personal wishes in what you create, it can really make you struggle a lot, but it's also important to to keep going and just learn from that. And uh, yeah, I mean, nobody is on this planet happy all the time, no. right? And for me personally, I've always complained like, oh man, I wish I had more time so I could practice more. Um, because I, I believe 
2017, 18 had been those two years where I literally was in the States every month. I flew back and forth, back and forth, power miles user now. Um, and I was super busy and, and I was, I didn't, I wasn't complaining, but I wished for myself. I had more time to practice my instrument and just yes. for myself. And now in this COVID times, in this ever since this pandemic ha hit us or hit the whole planet, um, I, I realized now I have all that time, but I am so missing the input from how my life used to be because that was why my, my system created all that output. And now my couch is not enough input <laughs> to, to make me urge, like really want to play guitar. And I had a couple of um, weeks where I really struggled um, simply by the fact that my life changed completely 180 degrees when, when you literally tour and you spend more time at airports than in, in your own kitchen, for example. Mm -hmm. And when this is your life and out of a sudden there's like, it's like somebody rips off the carpet underneath your feet and, and you're standing there like, like an idiot, like, oh, and I realized that I really have to kick my own butt to find that creative spot again that that i am like even if people would ask me can you play guitar for me i'm like Meh. and that is scary if that happens yeah. at least to me I, I was really like what is this now is this a change of profession what's what's coming up or why don't i want to play guitar and um i realized by forcing myself to play a little every day it slowly came back but it was the simple fact that the input the the normal input that was my daily life was completely missing and it's like set on zero and and then you would start from zero again and build your creativity up again and i i have been playing more and more but it's uh yeah weird times well i'm, I'm glad to see that you're taking those times and doing something with it now and, and absolutely uh, I love the stuff you're creating and those one minute jams, you should oh, go and see them. And you know what I also created? What's that? I created a release date for our Something on Eleven album. I wasn't going to mention it just in case, you know, it had really taken a It back, happened back. like two, three days ago. Congratulations. Um, thank you. So we're going to release our Something on Eleven album. It's eight beautiful tracks. They're sitting in the studio, patiently waiting, sitting all together, wearing their face masks, mm -hmm. socially Good. distancing. Good. And uh, the release date probably will be the 13th of November. Amazing. So we'll have to have another chat afterwards. We'll see how that's gone. Oh, yay. And um, there'll be links underneath this video to your main social media stuff. and um, To the One Minute Gems. And to the One Minute Gems. <laughs> but of course, there will also be somewhere you will eventually find something on 11, which is your side project. Is it's it, a side it? project, yeah. With Alan Brentini to play some wonderful instrumental guitar music? Not only. So we, when we started, we were like, ah, let's do some instrumental stuff. But then we figured we both are singers. So this is like the craziest album I think I've ever done with Alan together because the idea is to uh, create music and not pay attention to mainstream rules when it comes to songwriting, sounds or whatever. So we would have like, as the album as a whole, we would have like instrumental tracks too. We would have an album where just I'm singing, we have a, a, a sorry, a song. Then we have a song where Ellen is singing and doing the main vocals. Then we do duet kind of stuff, sing together. And then we have one where we wrote, um, it's called Phil from India. And Phil from India is nice. He's here with us now. It sounds like Phil from India. And Phil from India um, has, it, it, there are vocals on it, it's pretty poppy, but the chorus is a guitar melody. Rather so, than a vocal melody. Exactly. Wow. Who does that? Nobody. <laughs> but something on 11. Um, yeah, and it's just, we have a drum solo, like a super long drum solo in the middle of one song. Then we have a kind of like Indian drone thing which is super long in the, that literally breaks up the song in the middle. No radio station will play that, but you know, for the passion and love of creating music and fulfilling your dreams by writing something that is what you want, not what the radio stations want. 
um, this is just the best thing for your soul and, and the best food for your soul and heart. It's, it feels really good. And I experimented a lot with the vocals going like, you know, like, um, show me how to live. I did a lot of that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just crazy all over. But we are both, Alan and I are both so proud of how it turned out to be. And we can't wait for you guys to hear it. I'm excited. That's, yeah. That's very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you do it live and have to, you know, have some kind of protection. <laughs> Jen. Andy. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. You're very, very welcome. You're always welcome on a chair, you know, one meter away from me at all times. Uh, yeah, we make sure. Imagine that, that this like... is the biggest hug in the world, full of love Absolutely. and friendship and all those positive <laughs> vibes yeah. that you bring whenever we're around. That's Jen Majora, everybody, on Making Money with Guitars. Go and check out her stuff, but before you do, comment down below and say hi to us. And also, there's some videos. Normally, they're covering my guest's face, but there's no way I'm covering that face. So they're covering, currently covering my face. I'm still talking to you. Go and watch some videos, and I hope you've enjoyed them. I'll see you soon. <laughs>